Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we talk about what is the mecca for the bourbon industry. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Royce Neely, Kathy Cool, and Katie Joyce. Hey, gang, what's up? Howdy. What's Hello. Going? Hello. Hey, oh, so, yeah, we'll have a little bit of a debate after the uh, break where we talk about where's the place that you have to go. If you're a bourbon fan, you must go here, whatever that is. We'll get to that after the break. For right now, Katie said there's something that's just been killing her. She, there's something she's been mm -hmm. thinking about, wanting to ask on this show. And All day. Kind of she's Forever. Talking. Yeah, yeah. She's texting us and, and stuff like that today, being like, I got this one topic. And she kept trying to get in today. We're like, no, no, no. Finally, we're on the last show of the day. And we're like, okay, Katie, now, now go ahead. You get to do and this. And seriously, Katie. I had family functions today and that was really disruptive. Oh, yeah, it was. It was the group chat. Yeah. And Katie's the one that always has to say, okay, if you if you're like, uh, okay, we'll we'll get to that and just be like, okay, thank you. <laughs> PY, thank you. Yeah. Always every every yeah, you don't want to have, ever have my mom in one of these chat groups because my mom <laughs> will respond to every single text oh, every single one is she a last word person oh yeah last you word person oh. like even they have if it's the last word my kid will text at any hour so if my kid uh texts at uh, one o'clock in the morning my mom doesn't get it because she's sleeping but when she gets up she'll be like uh you know thank you or sounds good mm -hmm. uh you know it, 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 a text to me is it's immediate if you don't if you don't catch it you're not responding to immediately forget it you know but yeah my mom always responds last word person that makes me want to change my small talk. Just that no, no. We want to. We're out nope. here. This topic. Uh, we want to know what you think does. about all day. Because yeah. uh, because <clears throat> that one is the thing that sets me off. Is if someone responds K, just the letter, yeah. sets okay. me off. No, I'm like I'm like, oh, you go. What the hell? Am I still here? My no, you're you're here. You're so, here. You're here. It's uh, okay. You're in your safe place. Katie, you're in my here. black. You're okay. okay. Th this leads perfectly into my small talk of annoying dogs who make my screen go black as I'm starting to talk because they unplugged my computer here. Hey, and things like that is why, I, like I tell, do not do business over text message. Because <laughs> it's so easy. Oh I mean, it gosh. really is. It's so easy to get offended over text message. When they, I mean, you get older people that write K and yes. don't know. You know what I mean? You just don't yep. know what it. I mean, here's I, the thing about the written word: you don't know the tone in the written word yeah so, so k could be like k in person to get your tone and then solidify it in writing afterwards and that's okay. the perfect solution so like don't do just writing because the tone is completely lost don't do it by okay. text but you you i completely agree that that in person needs to be there to flush out all the details make sure you're on the same page but you as the lawyer i mean you have to have it in writing at the end of it so yeah. even i tell clients of like if you've agreed <laughs> to something verbally Send that text message of a, oh, just to confirm, we agreed to X, Y, and Z. And then yeah, that's it's different. in writing. Yeah. But now the tone doesn't matter. No, because Royce is not doing business by text. No. 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 Royce doesn't even text me back. So, no, he's not doing any sort of business. I believe text. that. 
I had to have a talk with my dad. He just started texting. We forced him to start texting like two years ago. And I was reading, I was around him and reading some of the stuff. And I'm like, you, do you understand? Like when you say it that way, it makes people sound like you're pissed at him. He's like, what? So, I mean, and it was like business shit he was doing. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, God. my dad you can't get tone over the written word. My dad barely even used his cell phone. He did not send his own emails. His a staff would print out his emails, bring them to him. He would hand write the answer or dictate to them what he wanted to respond, and they would go <laughs> type out the answer response to him. And he was type, running a law firm. Type smiley face. <laughs> yeah, until until December 2020, up. he was running a law firm. And uh-huh. that's how he did business. And it worked for him. Uh, I, down. however, respond to over 100 emails a day on my own and cannot keep up with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What was the real question, though? This is still... Yeah, the real question was this terror here that you now see on your screen. I have been Midas. fighting with him. This handful that I have right here was a rope toy as okay. a matter of wow. 20 minutes ago. And he Those are not easy to, to destroy. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was all wound up in this nice, what looked like indestructible rope toy. And he has made very quick work of it, which now he's switched in the. He is relieved. He's relieved a lot of tension in the last hour and a half. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> oh, yes, he has. That dog. <laughs> so um, he's a nine month old puppy and he, he <laughs> just destroys everything, as you've seen. So two humping I, sessions and a, uh, and a rope. A toy. minimum of two humping yeah. sessions. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so my small talk was, does anyone know of any actual indestructible dog toys or when they destroy it, it's okay for them to eat the little piece? Are you going to talk now? Is that is that why you're in the mic? I would have thought that the answer was the rope toy because uh, the no. shop dog, the uh, know, he had he an emergency vet yeah. visit before for eating the pieces of the rope and oh, having too many of them and then vomiting everywhere. Uh-huh. And so we Ooh. had to go make sure he didn't have a blockage. So that was fun. Other than the time he unzipped the bedding in his kennel and ate the foam interior. Oh, that, that was another fun one. But yeah. So, so you can make a dog was- vomit by giving them hydrogen peroxide. And then if they can't pass the bumper of a Cadillac, then they perish. <laughs> you guys just are making me want a dog so bad. Yeah. I highly suggest keep sticking with cats. At yeah. All times. Or old dogs. Do you see the you see the sleeping? No, no, no. Old Do dogs are 11 not year answer. old pit behind me. The, this this beauty of, of a dog just sleeping in the background. Stick right. with the dogs over 10 years old and they just sleep. They just sleep. Yeah. The last That's two sleep. dogs I adopted, I adopted them at the ages of nine and ten. They had all of their issues and they now boss me about at the ages of 13 and 14. So mm-hmm. yeah. be very careful. Yeah, careful. I think a year for. old might be the sweet spot, personally. Like yeah. they've gotten past a lot of the puppy bullshit. Dogs but you know their personality, but you got a lot of time left. But also go with a cat. Just, just go with the cat. Just stick with them. Cats are easier. Love cats. Cats are easier. I have, I have two cats, and they're not nearly as much of a problem as, as this fool. Yeah. Well, well, I've, I can't I've, imagine having people over the house and the dogs humping pillows and stuff. I don't know how you, how you, how, where you're at. You right can now only come stuff. to my house if you're a fan of dogs. That's a okay. only solution. Right. Because he. Right. So Abby, uh, my friend. So. Uh, middle spoon slash what's her Instagram? Abby abroad, Abby J abroad. So, anyways, uh, after we went to the ABB barrel shop, she came back to my house, and so she was stayed the night at my house. And thankfully, she's a fan of dogs because Midas determined that he decided he didn't care about his mom or dad. We no longer existed to him, and he was gonna spend the night with Abby. And so he stayed down here with her and just slept with her all night and was like, "Bye, I don't uh-huh. care about any of you." I know you flash all and of pen? the pillows. Yeah. Oh, well, I hope so too. After what I saw. No. Are we drinking now? <laughs> it is time to drink. What is everyone <laughs> drinking? Thanks. Thanks. Advice Thank on God. Dog toys. That was a yeah. great small talk. <laughs> yeah. What is everyone yeah. drinking? Let's start with Kathy Cool. Oh, so Katie Joyce has been bringing out the new bottles. So I am going to open my Woolersheim. This is my Those have great corks. Brand new cork. 134 proof, new cork. That's, this is going to win, I predict. 
<laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Those things are explosive. Whoa. Explosive, yes. Miss Becca Sue. I have got oh, my bottle. Where is it? Uh, I've got some stumpy spirits here. I've got the uh, uh, righteous from uh, their single barrel selection. Their little fort. She's got the righteous. I know. It's her inside of my fort. in my fort. You know, I, need, I need to close the, the fort back inside up inside her pillow uh, fort. Make sure I oh. make, close the fort back up. All right, the, the fort has been closed. Ooh, okay. Not much. Okay. Not enough there to uh, knock uh, Kathy off. Kathy's got the lead. I've got old Rip here. Old Rip, Ooh. about halfway, uh, maybe a little more than half. So let's see what we got. No life left in that. Kathy still has the lead. Royce, you're next. I've got some Wild Turkey 101 oh. Rye. Okay. No, nothing there. Nothing there. All right. Last but not least is going to be Katie, if she can get to it. All right, Katie. She's literally fighting dogs off. Right. Yeah. Like, God, he's a maniac. Okay. I have bare knuckle. Okay. A BV barrel shop. There we go. Midas. Well, there he goes. Another round. Sir. Thank you. You know what? No. <laughs> it's like as soon as you turn away. Oh. <laughs> As you turn away, he just jumps back in. Yep. So then, I had to stare at him to make him be quiet. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Kathy, you win. Kathy, you win those. Uh, Good job, Kathy. And I cheers. just want to tell Midas, everybody loves a three times a night dude. There you go. Congratulations. Yeah. He's got some stamina. Steve, he good does. job talking over Katie's uh, cork. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, that was, that was he beautiful. Had to give you back from me talking. I did. I thought that was beautiful. I, I, I was, I was that. going at her because of what she did to Becca. I was, I was hurt by that. I appreciate so. that, Steve. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, what we'll do next, we'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to be talking about bourbon mecca. We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. We're also sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop focuses exclusively on barrel picks. It's the job of owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott to seek out distilleries that are making the best whiskey in the world, taste through their barrels, and select the ones that are off-profile in the best way possible. They have high standards and refuse to allow anything into their store other than something they would be proud to have their name on. This leads to some really awkward conversations with distilleries that can't make it, but they do it for you, their customers. Learn more about what is going on at their St. Louis-based store by heading over to abvbarrelshop.com. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller in one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at neelyfamilydistillery.com. This is Evan Eaters, and you're listening to the Bourbon Daily. Cheers. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're talking about the Bourbon Mecca. Yes, we are. So before we get to exactly that, let's define what Mecca is. Let's uh, go to Kathy. The definition is there for you. What do you, what do you got? 
The definition for a Mecca is a place regarded as the center for a specified group, activity, or interest. But it does not define square miles, and that is my first question. Can I have the country of origin? What? what? <laughs> like, where does spelling be? I want the country of origin. Oh, okay. No! Uh, well, square miles? Why does it have to be square miles? Was, was, was well, because... I think it's a place you visit. What, what would be the place that you would visit? So You're it's a singular like, like can, place. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not right. a state or Not a, a state. region. No. Like, like, well, the, I'll, I'll the state is obvious. Okay. Okay. I'll start. I'll start this show. Okay. All right. So if I'm if somebody's coming to Kentucky and they're like, I'll I can only go to one distillery. What distillery to you sums up Kentucky distilling? The history. Mm. The, I mean everything about it. I have to send people to Maker's Mark. Yep, Maker's that was Mark. on my list. Really? Yep. Yeah. I do. Yeah. The grounds. If you're are going beautiful. to just one, yeah. Well, just one. They can only go to one place. I mean, the history there, the the amount of time is unbelievable. The look of it. I mean, it look. It's in a holler. I mean, it looks like. Yep. I mean, what you would Especially think. Especially if you go the building. back road to get there and not the highway around, like where you feel you're driving. You're like, I'm going to end up in someone's driveway, and all yeah. of a sudden you're at this the water tower. Story. The water. Yep. I mean, I just, it's just beautiful. I mean, it the encapsulates. You go past. You go past a cooperage. Yeah, it encapsulates to craft to heritage. I, I mean, because they were started out as a small brand. I mean, just a That's family right. owned business, and have, have you know built themselves all the way up to being one of the the biggest bourbon companies in the world. All at that same place. So it's not like they've moved and now they're in this big right. mega complex. Uh, it's all happened right there. So yeah, that's. That might be it. That's that's actually a really good answer for sure. And I will say it's because of the distillery tours of why I support the brand of when, especially if I'm at a small town bar, they don't really have much of a selection at all. And I, if I can find Maker's Mark, I'm like, yes. I was like, this is my like easy choice. If someone says, what would you like? I'm like, just give me Maker's Mark. It's fine. But it's because of my distillery tours there of like the environment that they have created there at their actual distillery that I feel good supporting it in that way. Mm -hmm. You've got mm -hmm. the slushy, Steve. You get the, I mean, the slushy is unreal. Right. You've got the Maker's 46 Caves. So you get to see the innovation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was torn when I was thinking about it. I was torn between three places, and it was it was Buffalo Trace because of the history. Yeah. But they were kind of in third, honestly. And then it, I, what, I was, what I was grappling with was Woodford Preserve, and that's strictly because, I mean, the history there is unbelievable. But when you think about bourbon, you think of sour mash, and that's where sour mashing was invented. Right. So you've got that. The, the, the other one that you might throw in when you're talking to stories, uh, and again, just because of the history, not because of what's going on there now, would be Castle and Key. I mean, that's sure. really kind of, the start uh, of modern bourbon happens in 1897 when they do the Bottle and Bond Act. And, you know, it goes back to Colonel Taylor and, and what he brought. And, and that, that place has a lot of that history there. So that that's one that would be in the mix too. But I, I think, yeah, I think yeah, you I've, I've got to go on two VIP tours of uh, Maker's Mark and I, I think I have to agree. Yeah, I, I got you those, right? Uh, no, you didn't have <laughs> no, anything to do with that. Actually. Got whoa, whoa, whoa. That uh, was Amy. Got it. Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Amy. Amy. <laughs> <laughs> she has some pull there, apparently. She's so, a yeah. little a bit more important there. than you. No, uh, no, no. I, I got to go on a two full VIP tours, and they even served us lunch. I mean, it was full VIP. So, so much vip penis there. So, yeah. So, oh, much, VIP. so much vip penis. <laughs> <laughs> so much VIP in this show. Yeah, so I uh, so I came into bourbon in probably 2017. Okay. And I feel like wild turkey with that was a good one. You you've got all the family history there. That yeah. one felt like as I'm long not. as Jimmy is alive and signing autographs there, that's not a bad stop. If you're like, hey, there's one place you got to go. Well, you can go there and Jimmy Russell's signing bottles and stuff like that. And I mean, just last week I saw he's signing last week. I mean, so he's, he's still out there doing it. So, and you know, he started in 1954. Let's not forget about that. I mean, Seriously? 1954. That's 1954. when Jimmy Russell started his bourbon career. 54. Well, Jimmy Russell is the mecca person of the bourbon industry, and that's pretty much not sure. argue. That's not even arguable. Right. Yep. Right. Uh, and, and you know, another place that. Um, 
you know, I don't think from a historical perspective doesn't have it, but you know, for the industry that it is in is certainly a Mecca and it's part of the bourbon world. And that is bourbon's bistro. I, I think when you're talking about bourbon bars, that's the, the Mecca of bourbon bars. I mean, that, that place is, I agree. That's the first original bourbon bar. You've got uh, Bronner still involved there holding court at that bar. Um, and, and there's so many bourbon people. I mean, there'll never be a night. If you're there on a busy night, there's never a night when there's not someone that, you know, from the bourbon industry walking through there. I've, I've, I've met more people at that place than anywhere. So, yeah. That, well, that, that being said, what, what's, what's the, is the, what's the city? Ooh. The city I think is Louisville too. I, yes, I, they, they to, me, cause I much prefer Lexington over Louisville. What about Bardstown? Cities. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, but, like who, which, which distillers are in Louisville? Heaven Shit. Hill. Good <laughs> yeah. Also, Peerless. good job on everyone pronouncing yeah. Louisville correctly. Like, oh, good job to everyone in the group here. Oh. Louisville. Yeah, Louisville. Louis. Louisville. Louisville. Yeah, for yeah. Those, the Louisville. <laughs> Louisville. <laughs> So I, I think that Louisville is the, the place to be. I, I, I just, the, the amount that whiskeys are in there and they all have, you know, corporate structures and things like that, that, that are there presence there. I mean, all of them have offices in Louisville. That's the, that's the place to be really, but I, Ashland. I think Ashland is, is <laughs> certainly got to be considered. <laughs> Ashland is in the no. mix. Uh, no. sure. uh, I, uh, Lexington, I, I think is a third at best. I, I, I think Bardstown is the one that uh, they'd be very hurt if you're not answering them, but I just yeah. don't, I, I mean, it's cool. What's this, you know, Bardstown's Can a Can we cool just build up there? To be honest with you, I think Northern Kentucky is second. I think it's, I think it only takes part. I really do. I'm telling you the bourbon, the, what they've got going up there is pretty badass. Well, mm -hmm. cause I think it starts with, cause Buffalo Trace is north of the highway. And so I think it just starts that way of like, then you get to North Kentucky from uh, so Buffalo Trace is central Kentucky. That's Frankfurt. But it's technically north of 64, isn't it? It no. is north of 64. It is north of 64. Northern Kentucky starts where I'm at and goes up. I'm I not. It starts at Royce oh, Neely's place. It's, I was suggesting that the gateway to leaving North, 64 to go to Buffalo Trace. I'm going to talk over Katie as she Northern tries Kentucky. to math her way out of this. And I'm okay. gonna, just going to say that everything that Royce Neely is doing is in, innovative and creative. And it's it, it's built on history and everything you want out of bourbon. So I'm about Kathy and me. <laughs> oh, Kathy Cool coming in. Kathy Cool's coming in strong. <laughs> so I will say on my tools. list, I will okay. say muter, muter, Steve, muter. Of my list of things to talk about, I did have okay. the barrel shot first, but then I had uh -oh. Neely Family Distillery, and then I had Maker's Mark. So. Okay. I will say that oh, the barrel shop. Let's talk about that. The, the, the Mecca of bourbon. I didn't oh, it myself. Is the like, barrel shop the Mecca of bourbon? I think bourbon. the barrel shop's actually the answer because we draw all the distilleries together. We're the place it's where they the unite. It's the Missouri Mecca. I mean, yeah. there's yeah. no better place in Missouri. Ew. Yeah. 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 There's no better place in Missouri. Yeah. This is true. This mm -hmm. is true. And there's, yep, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, and we, now the conversation has stopped. Yeah, we, we pull all that stuff together too. I mean, we have people coming in from all over the country. It's uh, you know, we get to over the world. Coming. You yeah. have people visiting from China in China, yeah. Recently, so, just China, uh, somebody from China was in. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, stuff happens. So yeah. So there you go. Uh, any other just random things that are just kind of cool that uh, that uh, you think are unique and worth visiting that uh, s s could make a, a small play for something like that. Like the Buffalo at Buffalo Trace. Uh, is, is that the center of, uh, of the of So the I would gotta, ask of yeah. outside distilleries, of like bars, of like what's right. like the true like whiskey, like bourbon bars that like you have to make sure you go to. Because well, like there, I have like bistro. one in Lexington that I went to and I forget the name, but like it was like life change of like I had Ocean Age all the way back to like Voyage 4 like, or even right. late, like earlier. So like what are some of like the big not even big. I'll, I'll tell you making a big play these it's days hard. to me is that north of bourbon i mean i see that everywhere they're 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 certainly uh getting a lot of accolades mm -hmm. uh, yeah that that place royce uh, becca have you guys been there yet north of bourbon uh, you... i don't have we been there i thought we did go there with john Waddell. i feel like we might have we went to pearls yeah 
I, I feel like it sounds like Becca's just being. I don't know, man. Fully, you got a like, re- revival vintage like bottle it. shop is killing it too. Uh, Brad Bond's is killing it there. Revival. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we went to yeah. Pearls. I don't remember where else we went to. Evergreen he's, uh, Liquors down in. He's the uh, undisputed Florida. king of Dusty's now. Yeah, oh, yeah. really. Oh, no. <laughs> he, is. he is. Brad Bond's the undisputed else. king of Dusty's. Everybody else about. is catching charges. Yeah, yeah. He's the only one that does it legit. I feel like part of that is places where you could find rare or unique bottles, but that aren't charging stupid money for it. So, like, there's places you could find unique stuff, but they're like, oh, that's $200 per ounce. You're like, oh, okay, fuck you, too. But right. the finding the places where they appreciate the whiskey, but they're selling it at an amount that's like just their, this is our standard markup or our standard markup with an asterisk because it was super hard to find. Not a, we found this one bottle and we're going to charge you at the ass for it. So right. Middle finger to everybody. Yeah. What about is the, uh, is the true Mecca of bourbon off limits right now? Let me make a, a play for this one it, because the, the cave and the water and where they used to start distilling Jim beam is there. It's known where it's at, where Jacob beam started distilling. And, uh, obviously beam being the biggest bourbon company in the world at this point to this day and time is, is, is that place again, it's on private property. Freddie knows visited there. They know where it's at. He's gone there. He's got some yeast scrapings and stuff like that from there, uh, going on, uh, working with the Homer. If, if they could buy that land and make something like that, would that be the place where every bourbon fan wanted to go the, where the beam started distilling Would that, would that be kind of that place that, 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 you know, uh, people want to focus their attention on it. Could, it has the potential, it has right? Has the potential for sure. Yeah, it sounds church-like, but yeah. they, I don't. I don't know if all the bourbon fans are going to get it. Right. They could totally make that, and, and that fits in with Mecca theme as well. Mm-hmm. They could mm-hmm. absolutely buy that, commercialize it, but could commercialize it in a way that those who truly love whiskey still appreciate it. It's not just a hey, this is purely commercial pay us your money we actually right. don't care anything about the history so there's a way that that could be done correctly that i would feel confident and happy in saying like this is now the mecca spot right right royce you know of one i don't know if you want to say it so i won't put you on the spot but uh you know what i'm talking about right there's there's a, there's a spot that's kind of a bourbon mecca too that you're familiar with or do you not do you not know what i'm talking about no he, he's he's refusing to or at least he's he's, he's under not the advice of counsel yeah. he's not I'm, acknowledging I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think i yeah yeah so i i'm gonna i'll text <laughs> maybe, it to you i'm not gonna head. say it on the i'm not gonna be pull a kathy cool here and say it on the air yeah but right uh, Right. Yeah, he's going to frustrate all listeners instead of giving I, I, listeners what they I, want, like Kathy I've does. texted it to Royce, and, uh, and he'll so it's, it's funny. Not. I was actually thinking that, Akeley. That, I, that has the potential, say, right? I that, was going to say Georgetown has claimed it, but there's no specific spot where you – you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The, 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 the the marker is there, but, yes, if somebody had that and sure. was able to put all it, – it would be the spot, <laughs> you know, if you could prove that that's where it took place at. That's mm-hmm. the start of bourbon, right. That's where it was invented. Yeah, of yeah. course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to me, that's even more. To me, that's even more than than, than Jacob's cave. Yeah, know? yeah, possibly. Yeah, maybe it's Elijah we'll Craig's see. farm. When we have actual details. Oh, he said, he said it. He said it. Yeah, it's Elijah yeah. Craig's farm. Elijah Craig's farm. That that has the potential. Ooh. That has the potential. As again, as it's been told, yep. that's the start of bourbon and all that. That you know, here's the farm. If they if they could somehow open that up to, for, for, oh, like, to visit, oh, they like, could do so many fun things. Oh yeah, that could be a thing. Well, not really like because the there's Ferris really nothing. Wheel. No, there's really nothing to do there because it's right. Uh, back they then, do with all that stuff all the time. You you go to Lincoln's boyhood home. There's nothing there that from Lincoln. Not even the cabin that they got or anything. But they've created a whole tourist destination around Lincoln's boyhood <laughs> home and stuff. So. Yeah, you could do it. It could be done if they. If but, people, so, yeah. do we want to expose that spot to all of the commercial tourism for the money, yeah, or think... do we want to like hold it sacred? Kathy, and, have you ever I... been there? It's it's in downtown Georgetown. No, I haven't. Been. Georgetown. Yeah, it's no. there's a marker that says the birthplace of bourbon. It's it's called Royal Springs Creek, or well, it's Royal Spring. There's a small, it's where Bourbon 30 is located at. I mean, it's, they, they built, it's a, it's a water, there's a water treatment plant there now. It's like a sewer. <laughs> I mean, there ain't a lot, you know. Right. 
Right. I had a, I was attempting to do something there at one time. I mean, there's just not there's really not much you can do there. Right. Well, you will do things other places. Yeah, yeah eventually it'll be. Uh, Royce Neely was so there, uh, born there. There is a good yeah. argument though for like some <laughs> of like if there's historic areas or like even like old Jet Brothers of like of like where theirs was. It looks like it's still like nature. Like and so making it oh, too commercialized. Jet Brothers. Jet Brothers, yeah. It could. What about, what about at the county fair when you won Little Mister Kentucky or whatever the hell it was? That could be a spot. <laughs> Little Mr. Kentucky? He won How the fuck did you bring that up? Where, how did that come from? <laughs> do you know that? where the fuck that came his, from? But I his feel mom like entered him in Little Mr. Kentucky, like, and uh, he, he won. He there won. we go. There's the answer. Oh, of brought course that out he of won. Lesson, but that's the answer. Yeah. Of course he won. Why the fuck did she ever? Why did she ever tell you that, Aikley? With, with those pretty <laughs> eyes, I, I'm not surprised. It's about the place where I won Little Mister Kentucky at. <laughs> That's I was what sick. people go visit. They want to go visit that. Here's like, here's the okay. spot. He stood right here when he when he heard his name announced. <laughs> So many. Also, good for Kentucky. I know your mom took a photo of that. I yeah. have to get that. Yeah, at some point. Oh yeah, there's plenty. There's photos. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. there's probably a video. Yeah. Oh gosh. Uh, so I'm gonna change change it a little. I'm gonna okay. say that where the mecca doesn't exist is Ryan Thompson because he's not <laughs> buying me a decent fucking bottle of whiskey <laughs> when I get into. The, the whiskey hall of fame yeah yeah you're yeah he's he's well he'll buy a hundred dollar bottle but yeah he's... no i i'm pretty sure i spent more on that right yeah. right yeah you did you spent you more did. on that, for that one right oh yeah there. you did so ryan thompson you are not the bourbon well he's a billionaire we've confirmed that we have bank of bourbon, my, it might be ryan's bank account yeah that's, the that's the the mecca. Yeah, that's the Mecca. <laughs> Ryan's bank account. Yes. Or the fur coat. That's the Mecca. Oh yeah. my God, the fur, fur coat. coat. Yeah. yeah. They're going to they're, they're gonna retire that monocle in the Bell Hall of Fame. And so. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. There's there's some places that uh, are all vying to be the Bourbon Mecca. So fun uh, conversation. And uh, we finally put it out there that Royce won Little Mr. Kentucky one time. So, yeah. <laughs> Always in my mind, he's still the rating. You say champ. one time champ. as if it's a diss. Like the fact that he won, like that's fucking impressive. Like, it is. Oh yeah. Like, Thank you. He won one time. Always yeah. been a stud. What can I say? There you go. There you go. From the age All of right. six. Yep. Well, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Katie, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? Oh, you probably shouldn't go find me. But if you do want to, uh, go over to Instagram. You can find me at Katie Proof. All right, Kathy. You can find me dissing Ryan Thompson every day <laughs> and on Instagram at KKCastStrength. All right, Royce. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Neely Family Distillery, NeelyFamilyDistillery.com. All right. You know, Ryan Thompson's been coming on this show now for, I don't know, probably five years uh, at least. He still doesn't even know how it works or anything. He's like, do people watch this? There's I'm like, no, no it's a podcast. That he's been coming on here five years, Steve. This? Yeah, he has. Steve, no, he. I've been on here for six years. I, I think, well, then it's six years It has not plus. been fucking five years. It has. I, I, I know Ryan Thompson longer than you. I know uh, Ryan was in a book that I wrote back in 2015. 14 or something so i never podcasted I with ryan thompson till, till the last three years uh -huh. well he was on the bourbon show uh, i so really I, thought ryan thompson was going to be here tonight and i forgot it was katie instead so well, yeah well sorry, I, I didn't know who ryan thompson was up until i've been married to royce I'm I thompson was, he's, a, he's a staple of success at moonshine university oh yeah yeah he's, he's, there, he's a poster he's, boy he's, he's a poster, a poster boy, boy man yeah yeah uh, he's, he's like, such a poster boy I put them up there. So there you go. All right. Uh, Miss Becca Sue, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue, one K no C's. All right. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. We put their previous shows or blogs, all those Ryan Thompson shows, uh, six years plus cataloged, uh, over at uh, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us, the ABV Barrel Shop. You can try before you buy. See people like Ryan Thompson. He comes by frequently. He's already been there a couple times. Uh, been there more than Royce and Becca, even. How about that? And he's much further away. 
but he comes by. Well, that's how you do things when you're a good friend. Well, when you're a billionaire, you can just fly wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, this is He's true. He's probably there more than me, and I'm less than an hour away. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Becca, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you to please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. Finance will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some of the great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro is owned and operated by Russell Creed, who makes stills for the hobby distiller. He offers a one-stop shop for everything the at-home distiller needs. Whether it's a small, experimental stovetop still or something bigger you run outside, he has the still or parts you would have difficulty fabricating yourself if you were trying to build a DIY still project. Additionally, he has resources to assist in creating unique distilled spirits, including heirloom grains, barrels for aging, and recipes. Check out Russell's company online at moonshinestillpro.com. Finally, I have a question for you. Have you ever boxed a bear? Of course not. That'd be silly. Bears really don't follow the rules, so shots in the back of the head, punches to the nuts, and scrums after the bell would be the norm. A better idea would be to enjoy Boxing Bear Whiskey, a brand crafted by Nobleton's Distilling House in Union, Missouri, and sold exclusively at the ABV Barrel Shop in suburban St. Louis. This is a popular offering that sells out quickly, but when you're in town, stop by the ABV Barrel Shop and see if they have it in stock. Better yet, sign up for their email and text distribution over at abvbarrelshop.com, and you'll know exactly when it is in stock. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.